regarding public notice of meeting. Notice of the time and place of this meeting was publicized by notifying the area news media, by publicizing the same in the Omaha World Herald and outlets, by displaying such notice on the arcade level of Energy Plaza since November 8, 2013, and by mailing such notice to each of the district's directors on that same date. A copy of the proposed agenda for this meeting has been maintained on a current basis and is readily available for public inspection in the office of the district's corporate secretary. Additionally, a copy of the open meetings law is available for inspection in the public meeting book located in the meeting room. Item number three, review of the September 2013 comprehensive financial and operating reports and approval of the minutes for the last meeting. Second. Second. Ms. Caller Roll. Barrett. Yes. Cavanaugh. Yes. Gay. Yes. Green? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Mines? <laughs> Ulrich? Yes. Weber? Yes. Motion carried. Number four. Persons, persons wishing to address the Board of Directors on a particular item are asked to approach the microphone as that agenda item is discussed. Comments will be heard following Board discussion of the item and prior to a vote by the Board. Persons wishing to address the Board on all other matters will have an opportunity before the close of the meeting. Item number five, resolution number 5976. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District that management is hereby authorized to use regulatory accounting for major planned production outages to defer outage costs with amortization over the next operating cycle of production. Oh, so moved. Second. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, major planned production outages our power station outages with costs that exceed the normal operations by $5 million or more. OPPD's current accounting policy is to estimate and accrue these costs in advance of the outage. This method levelizes expenses for outage and non-outage years and the related rate impact on our customers. The acceptable policies for outage costs are to expense them as they are incurred or to defer the incremental outage expenses and amortize them over the next operating cycle of production. Uh, staff research indicates the current practice is no longer considered a, a appropriate accounting uh, methodology or industry practice, and therefore we recommend the change. So basically the people that uh, uh, benefit from the improvements or whatever that happened that outage, they'll, they'll be the ones that pay for this rather than the people ahead of time, just an accounting practice. Yes. Comments or questions from the board? Seeing none, any from the public? Jeffrey Picorni, 4969 South, 149th Court. Uh, you skipped over number four. I, I, I sometimes think I'm losing it. I'm 70 years old, but, um, or number three, review of the September 2013 Comprehensive Financial Operating Report. I mean, it, it went by me. Did you say anything? We voted on it. No, but there was no review. Or are you changing the definition of the word review? I mean, I think some people here would like to see how you did in October. All that information was thoroughly vetted at the committee meeting. I, I know, and now we're having the, the general meeting for the public where public can comment, and you went right by it. Now, I, I don't know if that's okay with the board. I don't know if it's okay with the people sitting here, but I came down here to see how you did in October. And you, you say you did okay or you didn't do okay. You just said we approved the review, and there wasn't any review. Are you going to review it, Mr. Chairman? We did. You, you, you did not do it today. This is the meeting. This is where public input. You can't talk at the committee meetings. I can't ask a question there. I can't ask a question here. And I, are you going to review the October results? That's simple as that. You can talk about it on Tuesday, but this is the time to review it then. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> Seeing none, please call the roll. Barrett. Yes. Kavanaugh. Yes. Gay? <coughs> Green? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Weber? Yes. Motion carried. <coughs> Item number six. Resolution number 5977. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District that the proposal of Irwin Industries Inc. in the amount of $3,581,344 to supply labor and materials for the replacement of heating elements for the Nebraska City Station, unit number one primary and secondary air, air preheaters, 
on request for proposal number 4135 and the bond of such bidder are hereby accepted. So move. Second. Mr. Weber, please. Uh, this item pertains to the replacement of the air preheater basket at Nebraska City Station Unit 1. It proposes the issuance of a contract <coughs> for labor and materials for the replacement of the heating elements in those air preheaters. These elements were last replaced in 2007. <coughs> the Nebraska City Unit has been approaching a load restriction due to increased pressure drop in the flue gas systems caused by the following of the air preheater heating elements. Visual inspection has shown that the air preheater heating elements are in poor condition, causing reduced heat transfer efficiency. These uh, heating elements will be replaced during the planned outage in May 2014. And this will re prevent the uh, load restrictions related to that operation. Three bids were received. One bid was determined to be uh, legally non-responsive. The engineer's estimate is $7,200,000. The action we're asking is authorization by the board to award a contract in the amount of $3,581,344 to Irwin Industries Incorporated to supply labor and materials for the replacement of heating elements for Nebraska City Station Unit 1 primary and secondary air computers. Very good. Any uh, comments from the board or questions, Dr. Gay? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to ask John, can you, on the bids on this, $7.2 million was the engineer's estimate, we got it at half price, basically. I'd just like to ask John to explain how that happens, is why the discrepancy. I know there were higher bids yeah. at $5 million right. and then 4.1, but that's a big difference. How did we get that, if you want to yeah, tell? If I can stand right there. Right here. Here. Yeah. Uh, a couple things play into that, I believe. Uh, initially, we took the total project cost from 2007 instead of just taking materials and uh, labor. And so we started with a number that, that was higher than we should have. Uh, and then adjusted that for inflation to give us a, a range for this time. So that number should have been lower to begin with. Back in 2007, um, so we were in error as as far as inflating that engineer's estimate. That probably accounts for about a million dollars of that number, and uh, we believe that also the increased uh, competition and labor rates at this point in time uh, account for lower rates. So on the so when you did the RFP, then you put out an RFP. Does that change a lot of way though? If you, yeah. you just noticed it after the right. fact, so you didn't go out and write, rewrite a new RFP. That's correct. Okay. And like I say, the other one's 5.4 million and 4.1 million. Right. That's a little bit, but that's, I mean, it's good to our side, obviously, <laughs> but yeah. it's a, yeah. it's I just wanted that addressed for somebody else. Obviously, the engineer's estimate is not given to anyone. That's correct. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> well, but in the RFP, though, I was, just, I was wondering how they're, how we went about the process. Of no, we, use, we use the engineer's estimate in the house. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Any from the public? Seeing none, please call the roll. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You were moving around, but. I know I'm working through it. Yeah. Um, the question is uh, how long do these normally last you said you did them in 2007 is this normal this seven-year uh, breakdown maybe some warranties and is it the same company that installed them originally are they the ones being hired today John it's <laughs> not the same company that installed them originally and the, the lifespan of air preheater baskets can vary depending on the, the capacity factor of the units how much they're running um, but seven to nine years is probably the sweet spot for that. Okay. And we're timing it with a, a planned unit outage as well. So. This is, it takes five five or six weeks to put these in, right? Uh, not quite that long. Probably yeah. five, four or five weeks. Four or five weeks. So it has to be an ex a planned big outage. Right. And the next one uh, like that is next spring. Next spring. Otherwise it'd be 18. So it, it's our window. 
And, and it should improve emissions too, right? Efficiency. You know, improve the efficiency of the Which improves Which emissions. Improves the emissions. We're all happy today. <laughs> you are. Uh, okay. Anybody else? Please call the roll. Here. Yes. Yes. Gay. Yes. Green. Yes. McGuire. Yes. Ulrich. Yes. Weber. Yes. Motion carried. Item number seven, resolution number 5978. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Directors of the Omaha Public Power District that the board meeting schedule for 2014, as outlined on Exhibit A attached here to, is hereby approved. So moved. Director Green. Article four of the bylaws says that we have to set our meeting schedule in advance and we do so. Our meeting our general board meetings are usually at 10 o'clock a.m. in Energy Plaza, the first Thursday after the 10th of the month. The schedule which is before you uh, adopts that for 10 of the 12 months. Uh, there are two months where, given the timing within the month, uh, March will be March 20th, June will be June 19th. We also do at least one meeting a year in the evening, and that one will be August 14th at Energy Plaza, which will <coughs> commence at 7 p.m. So it's January 16, February 13, March 20, April 17, May 15, June 19, July 17, August 14, September 11, October 16, November 13, and December 11, all at Energy Plaza. I would recommend the and the committee meetings are, are usually the Tuesday before the board meeting in the committee room. So I would recommend this to the board. The comments or questions from any board members? That's great. Uh, just a comment. Uh, I, not really on the meetings, but I just wanted to say I, I thought uh, just being new, we, I thought we'd do a pretty good job of getting out in the public on those. Uh, you know, I guess seminars Lisa puts on and, and her group. I, th I think we do a good job. I, I hope we continue to do that. Are we going to continue to do that in 2014? You know, so I think people have a chance to come to those meetings at night. And I've heard they're fairly well attended. I've been one. That's all I can make so far, but uh, I'm just glad to see that we're doing that. So for the public, we do. I think we do a good job in outreach. So, good. I have one question. Uh, Director Green, on the May 20th, there's an asterisk by that. What does that signify? Uh, March 20th. Oh, March, March 20th. March 20th and June 19th are the two that are not the first Thursday after the 10th of the month, but are later okay. due to the way the month lays out and other things <laughs> which are going on. There's some conferences or something. That yeah. Key management people will be attending. Okay. That answered it. Thank you very much, Walter. Any other questions or comments? Any from the public? Please call the roll. <coughs> Excuse me. Barrett? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Kay. Yes. Green? Yes. McGuire? Yes. Ulrich? Yes. Weber? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, at this stage of the game, we're going to have our State of the Utility Report from President Gates. Mr. Gates? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll run through the normal sequence that we start with generation and then run through the uh, transmission and financials and customers as we go through this. Uh, central maintenance in the last month uh, support projects basically at all the locations that we have in the district. Um, it's a heavy maintenance time for us, uh, getting ready for our January, February, March type uh, peaks going forward. I think it's interesting to note that at North Omaha we began load natural gas testing on all the units to operate on natural gas. To date, uh, testing has been performed on units one through three, and testing of units four and five will be performed later this month. The testing does consider, cons uh, consist of developing a new heat rate curve uh, when firing on all gas and determining what the minimum load is on those units uh, going forward. Uh, both Nebraska City and uh, one and two had uh, highly productive months at 88.5 and 92.4 percent, uh, respectively, and we did extensive inspections on our combustion turbines. In energy marketing and trading area, uh, renewable energy contributed to 7.6% of our retail energy sales. 
and the capacity on that, mainly wind, <coughs> was 50.4% uh, for October. So that's very high capacity. On the We're also starting to uh, practice this too light a term, but get ready for our participation in the Southwest Power Pool auction revenue rights transmission uh, congestion market and the structured market trials are beginning for those so that we're ready for its uh, implementation which is currently scheduled for March 2014. With regard to Fort Calhoun Station, uh, the priorities do remain the same there. A safety human performance fix the plant and corrective action program and training. We did have several significant uh, <coughs> milestones since the last meeting of the board. Uh, we did heat up the plant to mode 3, which is full operating temperature and pressure, and then we cooled it back down. That was witnessed by the NRC and ourselves. There were no significant issues, uh, very complimentary of that heat up and cool down, as well as complimentary of the status of the equipment. Uh, it was in good condition um, as that heat up and cool down occurred, so uh, we know the status of the physical facility to a larger degree now. Uh, we're in the pr uh, process right now of finishing up some work there and preparing to uh, reheat the plant. And there's a number of projects that uh, we've discussed along the way that are completing in that area, including the security upgrade as well as uh, maintenance in several areas. We do have a public meeting coming up uh, next Thursday evening. It's a different style. It's called a Category 3 in which the NRC will be making presentations and uh, asking, answering any questions from the public on the status of their inspection efforts and uh, future restart of the unit. Uh, we did have several interactions with the NRC over the last month. Uh, significant ones was a license amendment request to revise the current licensing basis for high energy line break. A work hour rule exemption uh, was issued on Monday, October 28th. And then our operational readiness team, called an ORAT, uh, was scheduled October 28th, uh, the week of that. That's the team that watched the heat up and cool down by the operators uh, with essentially no comments. And the conclusion was that Fort Calhoun can be operated safely and can proceed with startup from that perspective. Although the, the 350 checklist is still not complete and the status of that will be covered next, uh, next Thursday. We have a slate of NRC uh, interactions going through uh, the end of the year. Uh, one of the more significant ones is our ERO evaluated exercise on December 3rd. That was previously scheduled a couple months ago, but due to the weather that day, it was not conducted uh, so that we could have a good look at what we've got. In transmission and distribution, um, on Friday, November 1st, we had two uh, very small and seemingly harmless storm fronts uh, came through the metro area. They resulted in a small amount of customer outages so that our crews repaired in short order. What wasn't apparent to all the customers uh, in, in total, that the bulk of the storm's energy was released at high altitude for us, uh, 80 to 100 feet, causing damage to transmission lines that allow us to move the energy around the district. So we had several crews that worked through the night and well into the next day high in the air, transmission towers are very high, to repair these lines and averting a possible loss of our highway that we bring power in and take power out of the company with. So. It's a great effort by the TMB folks uh, to do that. It was a very unusual storm with that relatively high altitude uh, energy dissipation. Uh, we did do a full drill this year, uh, this week, uh, to simulate the, any bad weather that may be coming, storms and uh, snow. And that was a full scope drill for the whole company uh, to make sure we're ready, and that also went very, very well. And we did meet uh, with the Power Review Board on a couple of things. The uh, 345 line that we've talked about before going to Sibley, Missouri, and also for our application to purchase 400 megawatts of wind. That was approved by the Power Review Board unanimously, 4-0. Uh, so we're proceeding down the path to acquire that 400 megawatts of wind. The uh, 2014 preliminary car <coughs> corporate operating plan and, and proposed fuel and purchase power adjustment, the FPPA, that was discussed at committee meetings on Tuesday. It'll be voted on by the board in our December board meeting. We're also going to have a full presentation of that shortly, uh, Mr. Chairman, which will follow my remarks. Just in general, on the October results, there was a question. There's no additional rate increases needed in 2013, and also our net income, if that's a general uh, measure of our entire company performance, is on target. It's actually just slightly above target. The customers, uh, uh, as far as regarding our interfaces, the goal was to enroll this month 300 new customers in our residential surge guard protection. Uh, we did that, so that was successful. Uh, we have a, uh, we assisted an all metals recycling facility near Fremont in testing a new metal recycling machine. It will be the largest uh, metal shredder and sorter in the Midwest, and it obviously takes a lot of power to do that, and surges along the line. That went well. 
And we did participate in the Travelers Groundbreaking this past week, which was attended by the governor and uh, many officials from Travelers as well, as well as our own economic development people. And that's a, a big success for economic development uh, within our area, and obviously power prices and our involvement play a key, key role in that. And we participated in a stakeholder listening session with the EPA in Region 7 and the NDEQ from the state of Nebraska on November 1, and the purpose of that was for the EPA to collect input on the impacted utilities on development regulations, particularly to reduce CO2 emissions going forward. We hosted a speaker series on October 16th, uh, which is part of what I believe Director Gay was referring to, and it allows input so that we can gather uh, input going forward. And to the people and the team at OPPD, which has already been mentioned for their great work, which they have done over decades, uh, they had several special events, and this happened to center around the annual Omaha Diversity Week. OPPD is a founding sponsor of Omaha Diversity Week, and we're we'll talking about the week of September 23rd. We participated in the Celebrate Diversity Job Fair, which is the 26th, and we had uh, just over 20 employees volunteer for a, com a community-wide truckload sale of food, which was sponsored by ConAgra on Saturday, to help people that need that. And we participated fully in those events. And once again, the volunteerism of the folks at OPPD is incredible. They really give their time, time to many, many things around the community. That concludes my report. Thank you, President Gates. As Eric mentioned, it's that time of year again when senior management presents the upcoming year's corporate operating plan. At Tuesday's board committee meeting, we were presented with the preliminary 2014 plan. And today, uh, Gary Gates and Edward Easterlin will present it to you, the public. This team has done a tremendous job in this plan, and there's good news in it for OPP customer owners. Just for clarification, however, is remember this is just the preliminary plan, and it will be, the final plan will be voted on at the December board meeting. So with that in mind, please uh, understand that this is a lengthy and complicated thing, but it, this presentation and the preliminary corporating operating plan for 2014 will be on our website for your thorough review after this meeting. And uh, we prefer that you submit questions about them via the website during the next 30 days um, and uh, save your questions until after you've had a chance to study the details of the plan. Let's get started then. Mr. Gates, if you would like to start the presentation, then we'll turn it over to Mr. Easterlin, our CFO, for the finance. Thanks, Mr. You're going to have a slide yeah, There's going to be uh, several slides. Uh, to bring up this presentation. As the chairman said, uh, I'll be given an overview of 2013 on, uh, and 2014 challenges, and then our CFO, Edward Easterlin, will cover the details of our proposed corporate operating plan. In 2013, it was uh, truly a busy year for the company. We selected, as has been mentioned before, 400 megawatts of wind additional purchase power agreement for negotiations. We're in those negotiations. And as we stated earlier, the Power Review Board did vote unanimously that that was an appropriate project, so we're proceeding through the, the details of that negotiation. It will be a 20-year contract uh, to purchase power from the wind farm. That's enough power to supply 118,000 homes of our customers. And it also allows us to review the purchase of that uh, wind farm after 10 years of operation. So it has a purchase option after 10 years going forward. It will increase our renewable portfolio to 817 megawatts. And that uh, is nearly double the current level of 400 uh, megawatts that we will be putting online this year and early next year. When you calculate that as a renewable portfolio, uh, it's going to be 30% of our retail sales will be to the customers will come from renewable sources by the end of 2015. We did negotiate a very favorable fuel supply and transportation contract, primarily for our coal. Uh, we approved a long-term fuel strategy in that area, including purchase and transportation of the Powder River Basin from the Powder River Basin. These uh, new coal contracts and fuel contracts provide a key role in helping to manage our costs, which you're going to hear about from Edward uh, at the conclusion of my comments. We have proceeded with the restart and recovery of Fort Calhoun Station. Nuclear fuel was loaded in the reactor in July, and as I mentioned in my report, the plant has been heated up to full operating pressure and temperature and cooled back down to demonstrate the capability of that. That went very well. And right now, we've got more than 90% of the restart checklist items complete and ready for closure. We received the 13th consecutive J.D. Power & Associates Award. We have finished first place, and you heard it briefed at earlier board meetings if you were here, in the 2013 Electric Utility Residential Customer Satisfaction Survey for mid-sized utilities in the Midwest. That's the 13th straight year. That doesn't just happen. It's a credit to all the people at OPPD that are here today and have been here before. 
We completed collective bargaining agreements. We made great progress with all the unions and a great partnership toward the end of the year. The result of these negotiations also help reduce future costs and we, as we've made the changes there. This one, this next one on e-source is one that uh, we haven't really talked a lot about, but it's our uh, utility branding, both from safety and other <coughs> issues. We were selected the top utility in e-source's 2013 top 10 utility brand rankings. Our brand is strong and one, one with which customers identify. So it was a good reward to the folks that are involved in that to be recognized in a national level. We do have challenges ahead of us. They'll be reflected in our corporate operating plan that will be discussed in a financial way. But to put them more in context, the improvement of Fort Calhoun Station regulatory rating will be a big focus in 2014 as we emerge from Chapter 350 and run into normal operating, be put into normal operating categories. We'll be participating in the Southwest Power Pool. I mentioned that in my earlier comments, and we're busy preparing for that. But the key there, it's going to be referred to, and you'll hear us talk about it a lot in the future, is the day two market. And that will be a way of marketing power throughout the Southwest Power Pool, of which we're a member. We've already been uh, running through that in our internal systems, and we expect that to go live in March of 2015. It's been a huge corporate effort and involved essentially the whole company to get ready for that. Through all this, and at the direction of our board of directors, uh, the key here is our mission, which is affordable, reliable, and environmentally sensitive energy. But as, as uh, has been stated many times to me by board members, uh, you need to maintain safe and reliable service is a key part of that. And we have, both in 13 and looking forward to 14, you'll note in the budget that we continue to fund transmission and distribution upgrades. Those are key to us uh, going forward, and we need to maintain the reli high reliability that we have right now. We do respond quickly to outages, as I said before, even unusual ones that occur 100 feet above the ground. So we've, we continue to focus on that going forward. Evolving regulations. Uh, we expect uh, new regulations uh, to be promulgated in many areas. Uh, we anticipate some uh, new greenhouse gas initiatives from the EPA going forward in 2014. And our goal at, uh, with regard to nuclear is to continue to implement the Fukushima uh, recommendations that were made out of those. Those are included in our budget and we'll continue to implement any requirements there. We are going to implement uh, the stakeholder process. We had several um, open houses that got us uh, input on how to form that process. We've done that. The board has approved that. And as a result, the customers will have a new platform to share their views on what's important uh, with their electric utility and what the company is doing well and what it could do better in 2014. <coughs> Last of my comments, but certainly not the least, is that the organizational and operating efficiencies uh, have been used to gain great revenue or great cost control in the past and will continue. We call it the lean manufacturing principle. Some of you may be uh, familiar with that term. But we use it to redesign our business processes, to make them more efficient uh, in, in the production of what they need to do. So for just to give you some example of numbers in the just-in-time business world, over the past four years, lean principles have cut $7.3 million from our operating budget and 215 business processes have been redesigned. We'll continue that process in 2014. We have trained a great deal of the uh, folks at OPPD in these lean manufacturing principles, and it's becoming more of a way of life for us now as opposed to a brand new project. And we'll continue to use those as we move forward. At this time, I'd like to introduce our CFO, Edward Easterlin, and he will take you through the details of our corporate operating plan, which, uh, as Chairman Ulrich said, is for information today, it will not be voted on today. It will be voted on during the December board meeting. Edward? <coughs> Good morning. As Gary mentioned, I'd like to provide an overview of the preliminary 2014 corporate operating plan. As you know, any plan has known information in it, and it also has uh, estimates. And in, in place of estimates, we include what we call assumptions. Those are our best guesses at what the future holds with regard to those certain items and conditions. So I'd like to start off by talking about the major assumptions that are included in our plan. As we look at uh, retail energy sales for 2014, and we look at the budget, compared to the budget in 13, there's a 4.2% reduction. In other words, 
the 2014 budget compared to the 2013 budget is is a reduction of 4.2. Now, the, the, that's an apples to apples comparison because both forecasts are based on normal weather conditions. Doesn't include mild, doesn't include uh, severe. This is not really a reduction in sales, however. What we found in doing this is we went through 2013, our forecast for 14 and 13 that we prepared last year was a little high. We had included some projected increases that were expected from some of our larger customers' expansions that did not materialize during the period. We've also seen increasing levels of consumption throughout all of our customer classes. Large customers, small classes, you name it, we're seeing reduced energy sales and consumption activities. When we look at where we are year to date in 2013 and we compare that to 2014, we are seeing an increase of about 0.3%. So the top line really is a budget to budget. We are seeing continued growth. It's just not at the levels we had expected. The next item is probably of uh, significance and importance, and that is we are projecting no rate increases in 2014. We have generally two rate categories there. First of all, we have general rates, and there's no rate increase, increase included there. The second category is our fuel and purchase power adjustment. And in that category, we are also holding this, the current rate in place. We do have a couple of adjustments I'd like to touch on a little later in the presentation on some items we propose to change in those in that tariff. Uh, on the revenue, additional revenue side, on the wholesale, we see increased wholesale or off-system sales as a result of Fort Calhoun being online for the full year of 2014. Looking at our savings account, those accounts we hold in-house to be able to um, get through difficult periods or periods of unexpected uh, operating conditions, the debt retirement reserve that uh, has been funded for a number of years is currently depleted. We transferred $17 million out of that reserve in October to our operating account. Uh, we're not showing any additional funding available for that account in 2014. We also have a rate stabilization reserve that currently has $32 million in that account, and we're planning to maintain that throughout the period. On the expenditure side, uh, capital and O&M, and uh, expenditures are planned to maintain safe, reliable service and also um, meet future load growth. The item that was discussed earlier this morning and approved with the outage accrual is also factored into the preparation of the plan. Turning from the assumptions uh, to look at additional information on our operations, as you can see, we have a long list of production outages scheduled in 2014. Some of this is normal maintenance activity. Uh, as we run our facilities, we take them offline periodically to go in and do work uh, that we can't do when we're operating, and, and we, we plan that out based on the level of operations and also the time frequency. What you see here is a very uh, extensive list of outages. That is normal in frequency, but it also includes some outages that have been deferred in the past because we couldn't take those units offline because of a Fort Calhoun being down. So this is an aggressive list. Our production operations area is going to be quite busy in, in 2014. Turning from the assumptions and looking at our projected revenues in in 2014, we're projecting $884 million in uh, revenue, retail revenue, that is. And that compares to $901 million in, in 2013. Now, the, the 2013 projected amount includes nine months of actuals. So we have actuals in through September, and then we have three months of projected. You can see there's a 1.2% reduction in revenue, and that really has to do with weather effect. We have actual weather factored into our projection. A little warmer summer than normal. 2014, we factored it based on normal weather conditions. You can see the breakdown in customer classes or groupings there. Residential, that's 376 million. Commercial, 278. Industrial, 210. And government municipals, 20 million. That totals the 884. Looking at another revenue category, our wholesale revenues. You can see an increase from 2013 to 2014. It goes from 120 to 191, with the majority of that increase occurring in the blue category. The other, 
and that represents increased off-system sales. That's what I mentioned earlier in the assumptions. We're going to have additional off-system revenues that are available to us. Our last revenue category is other operating revenue and non-operating income. Here you, you see the overall level pretty consistent throughout the period in the mid to low 30s with the exception of 2012 at 60, 60 million. Well, what happened in 2012 is we had a lot of insurance uh, payments coming in, reimbursements from flood expenses that we incurred in 2011. And that's included in the red portion of that uh, bar. Turning from revenue into our expense categories, first of all, we have operation and maintenance expense. In 2014, we're projecting $802 million worth of O&M expense. In 2013, it's 807. So slight reduction, $5 million uh, between the two years. You can see the major categories of expense. First being fuel at $195 million. Uh, production expense, 282. Administrative in general, 143, transmission distribution, 73, purchase power, 75, and customer accounts, 34. Just to kind of group some things up and kind of show you um, what it's all used for, if you take the fuel expense and the production expense and the purchase power and group that, it totals $552 million. And so that is actually the cost of producing electricity within our system. The other categories of Administrative in general, transmission, distribution, and customer accounts total $250 million, which makes up the balance of, of our cost, and that's 31%. Turning from O&M to capital, these are the additions to our system to either up, upgrade, improve, or replace our existing assets or expand the system to meet new load growth. Here, our CapEx or capital expenditures in 14 is $173 million. That compares to 170 million projected for 13. Here again, uh, the categories are broken out for 14. Uh, transmission distribution, uh, 79 million, 43 million for nuclear production, general plant 25, and fossil production at 26. If you group the nuclear production with fossil production, it equates to 40% of the total capital spend. Uh, transmission distribution is 46 uh, percent and general plant is 14. Giving you a, uh, just a view of what's under the hood with regard to our capital, you can see some of the larger items there. Um, nuclear regulatory compliance at 13 million. This is related to initial expenditures around Fukushima requirements and some security upgrades required through additional regulatory uh, action. Uh, second item is NC1 air preheat basket replacement. You heard about that this morning. That's at $4 million. Uh, nuclear containment internal structure at $5 million. These are initial expenditures in, in, uh, with regard to that project. Uh, Sarpy County 3 unit overhaul, $4 million, and uh, Nebraska City gas pipeline at $2 million. Looking at the transmission distribution area, we have $22 million in functional work. We call this functional work because sometimes we don't know what the work is until it occurs. We know there's going to be system requirements that, that come before us. We don't always know exactly what it is, so this is a category where we capture those items and then we use this money on what we actually perform during the year. The next category is more systematic in nature. It's our transmission distribution and pro improvement program. This is called our TDIP. This is where we assess the condition of our system and we proactively go out and replace aging uh, assets and infrastructure to maintain system reliability. The third is customer projects. This is really about uh, adding new infrastructure and capacity to meet future loads and customers that may be expanding or relocating into our area. Uh, the good news is that uh, given our revenues and our expenses and our cash position and cash flows, we are not projecting to issue any additional debt uh, in 13 or in 14. This is one category that's helping keep our, our costs down, if you will. We're not adding to our mortgage payment, and um, our cash flows are such that we can, we can finance our capital expenditures. Putting everything together from our revenue, our O&M, our interest expense, we can produce our, our, our net income projection, and that is at $56 million for 2014. That compares to 52 
in 2013. Key difference here, though, is that all 56 million is coming from from our, our revenue stream, and we're not using any of our internal uh, savings accounts to keep that that income at that higher level. Just to give you a, a view of the our savings accounts again, our debt retirement rate stabilization <coughs> reserve, we depleted the debt retirement account in October, so we only show the rate stabilization reserve in 13 and 14. Taking a look at our capital structure and the level of financial leverage we have on our balance sheet, uh, this is our debt ratio, and you can see it's improving from 53% in 2012 to 51% in 2014. Um, this, this basically tells how, mi how much, what portion of our assets are financed and what portion is funded through equity. Our target on this is, is equal to or less than 50%. So we're slightly above target, but we're going back uh, to where we, we like to be. <clears throat> Moving from the debt ratio until our debt service coverage uh, ratios, this is, this is an important ratio for us. Uh, the rating agencies and our investors are really interested, keenly interested in this. What this measures is internal cash flow. It, we have three measures that we look at. The first one is a senior lien debt service. And that, that's the top line, the blue line. This looks at the level of uh, debt payment that's under our senior lien bond indenture. The second is total debt service. This is all of our debt, senior lien and subordinate lien. In the subordinate lien, we have commercial paper. Uh, mini bonds, some of you may own mini bonds, and also um, periodically issue bonds. That's a little bit lower because it has more debt obligations in the ratio. The third one is fixed charge. Fixed charge includes all of our debt service, plus any contractual obligations that we have that are debt in nature. For example, if we have a take or pay contract with another entity for capacity, like with Western Area Power Administration, that, got, that gets factored in just like a debt obligation. There again, it reduces the ratio. The other part of this is, is this really tells you how many times you can make your debt payment. So if you take your revenues minus your O&M expenditures, and it says you can meet your debt obligation two times, well, after you make that payment, it means you have an equal amount available. And that equal amount is then available to fund capital expenditures and maintain your cash position. That's important because that's how we maintain that 50% debt ratio. Unlike investor-owned utilities who can issue stock and generate equity within their system or can have stock price increases to generate equity, the only way we can generate equity in the system is to fund it through internal funds or the repayment of debt obligations. Looking at our cash position, we're projecting to have 118 days of working capital or cash on hand at the end of 13 and projected 115 in 2014. Um, our minimum, we like to stay at 100 days. There is a period of time in 2014 where we're going to dip very close to that 100-day threshold. Um, we're going to have to pay, the, pay pretty close attention to that, but we do have a line of credit available to us that if we need to, we can utilize that's not reflected in these numbers. The board has retained a consulting firm uh, by the name of Ju New Gen uh, Strategies and Solutions to come in and review the preparation of the 2014 corporate operating plan, the assumptions, the projections, and whether or not we're spending adequate funds to maintain the system and the reliability going forward. They have completed their preliminary review and they're in the process of finalizing a report that will come back to the board with their recommendation and opinion before the December meeting. So in summary, OPPD's mission is to provide affordable, reliable, environmentally sensitive energy services to our customers. Uh, with that regard, uh, we are aligned with that mission for 2014. Our rates are, remain below the regional and national averages. Expenditures are sufficient to maintain system reliability. And 16.2% 16 16 of our retail energy sales will come from renewable resources in 2014. On an ongoing, continuous basis, we're managing our O&M, we're prioritizing and uh, managing capital investments, and we're always looking to identify risk and manage risk appropriately. 
So that completes the review of the corporate operating plan. We do have some tariff changes I'd like to present and discuss. Um, there are no rate increases associated with this, but there are some, some, some items we would like to um, ask approval for in December. The first item is with regard to the fuel and purchase power adjustment. Just a little background on this, uh, fuel cost is included in two <coughs> rates. Uh, most of our fuel cost is included in our general rate, and then any difference between what we have in our general rate and what's projected to be incurred in the upcoming budget is collected through our fuel and purchase power adjustment. Um, in the event that the fuel cost is actually going to be lower in the coming year, it would be a reduction in the fuel and purchase power adjustment. If the cost is projected to be higher, there would be an increase. So we have that annual adjustment mechanism that we call the FPPA. And in addition, if we have any over or under collection from the prior year, it gets factored into the calculation too. And specifically, the change we would like to, to, to request is the inclusion of consumables. Uh, consumables are chemicals and materials that are used directly in the production of electricity. An example would be at Nebraska City 2, we use lime in some of our environmental equipment. That lime cost is a variable cost, it's direct related to, to the electric production. We'd like to include that in the fuel and purchase power adjustment. That makes it consistent with the way energy is going to be priced in the SPP market that uh, President Gates mentioned just a few minutes ago. So as we price that energy into the day two market in SPP, Southwest Power Pool, those prices will be the same as we're looking at on the retail side with our customers. It makes it very consistent for staff to manage and understand energy prices if we do it consistently between both customer uh, groupings. Also, it's a better match with revenue and expenses. It's a, it becomes a variable revenue source that's matched to a variable um, cost source. We have a under collection on our FPPA from the prior period of about 49 million. <coughs> this is a result of increased purchases uh, for fuel, fuel and, and purchase power related to the Fort Calhoun station outage. The recommendation here is to collect that $49 million over a three year period. Uh, in doing that, we would have a $23 million collection in 2014. And the balance, the 26 million remaining, would be collected in 15 and 16. And the net effect here is there's no increase to, the, to our current rate or to the customers. Just to give you a little summary, what the amount included in our general rates is $180.8 <coughs> The increase with the fuel and purchase power is $23 million. The rate is 0 0.00215 cents per kilowatt hour. And that is the current rate in effect. There would be no change. <coughs> Some additional items, uh, miscellaneous or customer service charge changes. The first item has to do with uh, new, new lots, residential lots or development activity in the future. Uh, we're proposing that service ducts be added. I just want to say duck dynasty. I don't know about that. <laughs> Sorry, I had to digress there for a moment. Um, so we're going to... We're going to propose that these be added to future lots, and what that allows is basically a conduit from our service to the customer's connection. In the event there's a power failure in the future or a cable failure, we can remove that line, that cable, and replace it without actually disrupting the physical property or, or damaging the customer's property. It's probably a better way of saying it. Um, it's very efficient in the future for making repairs and replacements, and that's currently under works, and we'll be, there'll be further information coming about that. Reconnect charges. Here we have two charges. We have a charge that occurs after office hours and a charge that occurs during office hours. And the fees are about $55 during and 120 after. What we're proposing here is one charge that's equal of about $75, regardless of when the activity takes place. A reconnect charge, by the way, occurs when a customer disconnects from the system, and there could be a number of reasons, whether they're relocating, they're moving, um, it could be for lack of payment, and then they won't service reinstall. There's a cost to go back out and connect that service. 
other schedule changes, uh, customer deposit policy, new customers uh, take service from us. We require security deposit. Uh, today it's based on estimated usage for two months, what the bill amount is, and it varies by customer and the type of facility. What we're proposing here is to use a, a consistent amount for all customers and a payment of about $200. The last item there, uh, curtailment rates revised to indicate capacity curtailments may occur uh, when we don't have adequate operating uh, capability. We have that provision in those rates today, and it, this really relates to large customers who are on our curtailable rates. So if we have peak demand conditions and we can reduce our cost or avoid buying high price power on the market, we can ask customers to curtail, and we exercise that. Uh, this also says that in the event that we have limited capacity on our system, it may not be a peak load day, it may be a system condition with and on our system with how our system is operating, we can also go and then ask for reductions. This, this whole overall schedule is limited on how many times per year we can do it, the frequency. So it's not any, any additional impact on the customer. It's just additional frequency, or excuse me, flexibility on OPPD's part. The last item is miscellaneous housekeeping charges. Here we're looking at clarifying some language in our tariffs, in our schedules that benefit the staff and customers on for example, clarification of OPPD holidays, clarification on, on which rate schedules qualify for the level pay program. So with that, that completes the discussion on the, the tariff changes. And we presented this at committee uh, on Tuesday. We notified local media. Today, uh, we're presenting it again, and we'll be back in December requesting approval of the final plan. Thank you. My name is Patricia Fuller from Council Bluffs. Uh, first off, I would like to thank the board for their purchase requirement of the 400 megawatts of uh, wind energy. I think this is a great stride forward. Uh, also like to comment on uh, Governor Heinemann's uh, encouragement for public power districts to uh, view wind in a positive uh, manner. Uh, but as stakeholders and people that are affected by uh, the pollution from North Omaha plant, I guess we'd like to know a little bit more about the corporate operating plan for uh, environmentally sensitive energy. Basically, is there a commitment to close this plant? Is there a commitment to convert this plant to natural gas? I think that's something we'd all like to know some more specifics on, and also the expense that's going to be uh, associated with uh, current regulations on uh, mercury. Um, on November 4th, a group of us had a chance to go down to Lenexa, Kansas to the EPA hearing on carbon regulation. There were about 400 people there, and of that, the majority, uh, two to one margin, was in favor of carbon regulations. We know that uh, coal-fired power plants contribute 40% to greenhouse gases. We also know that 97% of all scientists believe that greenhouse gases are driving our climate change. Back in 2007, the Supreme Court affirmed the EPA's authority to regulate greenhouse gases. And uh, just this week, on November 11th, Yeb Sano, the Philippines delegate to uh, the UN Climate Convention in Poland, spoke out powerfully and poignantly, saying, to anyone who continues to deny the reality that this is climate change, I dare you to get off your ivory tower and away from the comfort of your armchair. I dare you to go to the islands of the Pacific, the islands of the Caribbean, and the islands of the Indian Ocean, 
and see the impacts of the rising sea levels to the hills of Central America that confront similar monstrous hurricanes to the vast savannas of Africa where climate change has likewise become a matter of life and death as food and water becomes more scarce. And if that is not enough, you may want to pay a visit to the Philippines right now. Although the full extent of climate change, although the full extent to which climate change influenced Super Typhoon Haiyan has not been determined, the storm is yet another reminder of how climate change has already made extreme weather more extreme. This horrific example shows just how critical it will be in the future to regulate carbon. Thank you. Hi, I'm Crystal Craig. I live in La Vista. Um, I had a couple of questions. Um, on the new wind farm, I was curious about how much of that power is going to be sold wholesale, and also on the restart of the nuke plant, how much of that is going to be distributed wholesale, and like how much is going to go to people like like us. We can work. Depending on day to day, mm -hmm. so we can try and get you some average. And she's asking for off-site sales. Off-system sales. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. I think that's what she means. That's what I thought she meant. Uh, I think the SPP uh, requirements will change a lot of this as day two and the day two thing, uh, which is all of the energy within the SPP is is put in a pool and. <coughs> the energy needs for the next day are determined by the various utilities and then utilities with excess power then will put in bids to supply that. So what's going to happen, it's going to be a day-to-day -day thing as to what's going to be required for domestic uses and what's going to be required for external uses. And then you add factor in, you saw the days that the units will be down because when those units are down, there's less power to sell to somebody else. So it's a complicated formula and I don't think we have a specific number in the budget but we, would do we don't segregate the power from Nebraska City or the power from Fort Calhoun or the power from the wind it's all on our system right you can't specifically say this power went here can you go ahead I, I would say that director Green's comment about the day two market is, is right on that in the future, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dispatching to the whole region with all the other companies to come up with the most economic operation of all the systems. So we're optimizing. And it's going to matter what the cost is of those resources as to how it's utilized. So to the extent everything is fully utilized, then everything goes in. Uh, today, what happens is an economic dispatch. So when we are running our system, we're taking the most economic resources in to serve our load. And then to the extent our other resources that are not being operated, if the cost of operating those resources are less than the market price and they're sold into the market, and that's what you see when you saw the off-system sale amount, that's where we're able to sell that. And the reason we do that is because all of our assets are owned by our customers. And to the extent we can sell those resources into the market and make money, we can take that money and then keep our rates down. So we're trying to optimize the use to manage those costs for our customer owners. That's where the money goes. So complicated answer, probably way too complicated for what you ask. I apologize. Thanks. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> no, I think that was great. I think that was, I love that kind of detail. And I think she does too. She's a smart young woman. Okay, uh, efficiency. For every dollar you invest in efficiency, you displace three to five dollars of future generation costs. It's a great way to lower your future generation costs. And then, of course, every dollar you invest in efficiency, you generate 7 to $12 worth of economic activity in the community, which you were discussing earlier about the economics. And the newest, greatest number is for every 10% decrease of an equity, you increase 50% economic numbers. You get 50% more economy. <clears throat> and why that's really important is because when you do efficiency, windows, doors, and insulation, you actually improve everybody's structures. You make them more livable, more pleasant to be in, safer, the whole business. Their healthcare costs go down, their overall costs go down, your overall costs go down. 
40% of your cost is generating electrons. If you didn't have to generate electrons to provide service, you could lower those overall costs for the corporation. And so, of course, the safest contract is a contract where you don't need energy. Thank you very much, and have a nice day. Oh, one more thing on the nuke plant. Um, you had said uh, at the executive meeting that um, uh, you, you're, you're estimating that you're going to be out of the 0350 committee by 2014. Uh, the last uh, committee, um, actually, when the committee shut down, there was oversight for an extra year and a half. And, of course, historically, that runs, you know, typically three to five years, depending on the problems. You were the worst one in the country, so I'm assuming you'll have a longer uh, thing. And then, of course, once you get to running, you have to make sure you can um, actually fill out the paperwork and run it at the same time. <clears throat> so um, anyway, so it's going to be longer than 2014. So I think that projection is a little dubious is all I was trying to add to. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. <coughs> Kathleen Hughes, um, Omaha, right here. Um, I just wanted to thank you for several things that uh, happened that I learned recently. One was that there was an education at the South Omaha Library um, from OPBD, where I was able to find out about the rate meter that you can that you can check out at the library. So I immediately checked it out, checked all everything in my house, and it was awesome. It's a really good education. I went out and bought a ton of several LED light bulbs that I'm just was amazed at how much energy was saved by the LED versus even the CF. CFL and the regular light bulbs and my really old lamps. So changing the lamps I use in the house. Um, and turning off the lights in the bathroom because I have four lights in the bathroom, but then I went to, this was given away at the um, Energy Expo, which was Sunday, and this is awesome. It's a solar night light, which is much better than having four lights in the bathroom in, at night. It's great. Um, um, and um, you have no water bottles on the table. That's great. <laughs> saving us saving us oil. <laughs> um, and I like the fact that you're talking about being environmentally sensitive. And um, um, what else am I grateful for? The education, I'd like that to continue to other libraries. It was really great. Wattester Solar Light. The, and the wind energy, that we have an increase of uh, the renewable wind energy to 30%. That's awesome. Really good news. Um, I'm very nervous about the nuclear power plant being opened, and we'd like to get beyond coal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Dr. Bobby Davis, uh, a lifelong rate uh, payer uh, in, in Omaha. You need the address 4947 Spalding for your records. Uh, I'd like to mention three things. Uh, number one, I uh, had the opportunity to find out about some very difficult situations that are occurring in Omaha as a result of an increase in asthma in the area around the North Omaha plant. And as a result of that increase in asthma, the state now has established L LB 800 which means that students who are out of school because they are ill or for any other reason uh, are now being sent to the Douglas County lawyers, I mean to the whole, going, going through the whole law thing. I have a flyer here if any of you would like to know more about that that's going on, but a lot of that is related to the uh, coal producing plant in North Omaha. So I'm saying that we really need to speed up that process because our children are suffering and now they're being put into the legal system and being taken from their families because they have asthma, because they're out of school, because they're sick. And so I, I know Senator Chambers is going to be working on getting that law repealed, but still it relates to what's coming out of the, the North Omaha plant. Uh, the other thing, I, I wasn't quite sure about where uh, our president was when he said, now I know that there was uh, some purchase of coal last in 2013. And there's, then you mentioned that there is some possibility of natural gas at the Fort Omaha plant, uh, at the North Omaha plant. So I'm not sure where we are. And back to the question that was asked earlier, I'm not hearing a plan on discontinuing burning coal. I, I hear a plan on buying more coal, which says to me 
that you're not continuing, that you're not planning to discontinue and using it, because if you were not going to use it, you wouldn't have bought it. So, uh, could we hear some information about what that plan is? I didn't hear it in the in your 2014 plan plan, and I was listening very carefully to see if I would hear that, and I didn't hear it. The uh, the coal purchases uh, that I was talking about are. Um, the rate, not necessarily if we're going to purchase the coal, but we have contracts to purchase coal if we need it. And the second is we have uh, we have tested and we are testing on gas. We have not made a decision, but we're doing that testing because we need that data to obviously make the decision if it's possible. And we've done that on one, two, three, and four and five will be done this month. So we haven't bought the coal, but we have a contract, uh, a favorable contract to buy it. So we, we don't know how much we're going to use next year. Plus, we have two coal plants in Odo County. You understand that as well. Oh, okay. So you are moving toward the, the natural gas, but you don't quite have a timeline. So we'll be hearing about that in next month's meeting. We'll be uh, <laughs> continuously reporting on that. I'm not going to commit to next month. I'll do a right. nice try, uh, Dr. Davis. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll be talking to you about it. Anybody else? Seeing none, readings adjourned.